Welcome to the life you crave. Simple and sustainable weight loss for women who have better things to do than diet. I'm your host, Leah Pinelli. I help ambitious, badass women stop overeating, overworking, and overgiving to lose weight from a place of love. I'll help you simplify weight loss, end your overwhelm, and create the life you crave. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe to this podcast. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Life You Crave podcast. You guys, today I have such a special gift for you all. I am here with my friend and fellow service provider, Lauren Fonville. Lauren is an integrative energy practitioner specializing in EFT, tapping for stress, anxiety, and trauma. She guides her clients on a journey of self-healing to break through obstacles, physical, mental, or emotional, that are keeping them stuck and holding them back in life or in business. She believes we all have the answers within, and sometimes we just need a little help accessing them. And that is why I have this woman on the show for you all today, because we talk all the time on this show about stress and anxiety, and even some little T trauma comes up, right? Um, And Lauren has an approach that is totally different from anything I offer, but so complimentary to what I offer. So I asked her to come on the show and share her wisdom and guidance with you all today. So welcome to the Life You Crave podcast, Lauren. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Leah. Absolutely. So you guys, if you missed it, um, we had a masterclass back in January called Breaking Up But Staying Friends with Sugar. And Lauren was a featured guest on it during that masterclass where she did a training with those of us who were there who attended the masterclass. She did a training on how to use EFT tapping as a tool in breaking up with sugar and really managing uh, those strong, strong cravings for sugar. So Lauren, I would love to, I would love to come around to making help, helping my listeners to make that connection between what you do and food. But before we do, would you mind just sharing with us a little bit about your story? Like, first of all, like what is EFT and how did you become an EFT practitioner? Yeah. So EFT stands for emotional freedom technique, and it's really a practice that helps you do just that. It helps you find freedom from your emotions. And I found it, it was a bit of a journey to get there, but uh, it was a time in my life where I was dealing with a lot of anxiety and stress, and I was looking for holistic ways of managing that stress. And for me, it started off with Um, yoga. And then I went through yoga teacher training, and I got introduced to Reiki, and sound healing, and I joined a coaching group. And it was in that coaching group that the coach brought in an EFT practitioner. And um, it was it was actually a group that was about that was about weight loss that I was that I was in. And um, I was, you know, like I said, I was very stressed out during, during that time. I was also very skeptical at this idea of tapping or this EFT, you know, being of, of any help to me, because the idea is you're actually physically tapping on certain points of your body while simultaneously acknowledging the emotions that you're feeling. And so in this group session, the practitioner really explained how we would do this. And um, I I would say it's kind of like Simon says, she would tap on a point and everybody in the group would tap on the same point and we would repeat the words that she was saying. And in that space of, and it was only like, I don't know, a 15 minute tapping session. I really felt a difference in my body. I really felt calmer. And I decided that I needed to know more about it. I needed to understand why. I was very curious as to what was actually happening inside my body that it made me feel calmer. And so then I went on to have a one-on-one session. And in that one-on-one session, um, she asked me what I wanted to focus on. And I really wanted to focus on the physical pain that I was dealing with because um, when I get stressed out and overwhelmed, my TMJ starts to act up. So my jaw would lock up and I was just experiencing a lot of pain in my neck, in my shoulders and in my jaw. And 
So the base, basically the way that it works is that she was asking me a lot of questions about how it made me feel that I was dealing with this pain and um, giving it a number on a, on a scale of one to 10 of, of how, um, how much pain and I, I was in. And so I had told her I was at an eight and then she continued to ask questions. And I was saying that I was really frustrated that I was having to deal with this. So we, she would come up with phrases like, I'm so frustrated with this pain. This pain is really frustrating. And I would be tapping where she was tapping. This is all done virtually, by the way. So I would be tapping in the same spot that she was tapping on repeating after her. And she continued to ask me questions. And then I found myself feeling really angry. And so then we changed the phrases to talk about this anger. And I was realizing that I had all this anger towards the dentist that took out my wisdom teeth because that was when my um, my TMJ started. And that was, mind you, 15 years prior to my, me. Ah. I didn't realize I was holding on to all this anger. Right. That's fascinating. Yeah. And then, so then feelings of betrayal came up because, because mm -hmm. I felt betrayed by the doctor because ultimately he... Um, he dislocated my jaw to take out my wisdom teeth. And I did not know that he was going to do that. Uh, and then um, this is where the story gets a little interesting. I had what I felt like was an unrelated thought. I had a, I had a memory pop up of a time that I was betrayed by a friend. And so in my mind that there was no connection there. And so I said, well, you know, you keep telling me and asking me what I'm thinking about. And this is the thought that I just had about this friendship. Um, but I don't think it's related. And she was like, okay, we're going to still tap on it anyway. So we went into detail about this particular situation. And then ultimately, the I, I let it led to a place of me just feeling sad that I had, you know, lost that friendship. And so it started off with me feeling really frustrated with the pain, ended with me feeling really sad that I lost this friend. Never in a million years would I have connected those dots on my own. Uh -huh. um, and then she asked me to check back in with the pain. And well, in the beginning, how I said I was at an eight, by the end of the session, I was at a two. And I was blown away by that because I had been doing all sorts of things to try and mitigate the pain from wearing a night guard, um, you know, going to de the dentist and getting one of those special night guards, um, rubbing peppermint oil on my jaw, only eating softer foods because the chewer, chewier foods yeah. would trigger, trigger it, like all these things that I was doing and none of it seemed to be making any sort of difference. And then when I, you know, began to make that connection between the physical pain, the anger and the betrayal that I was holding on to, it became abundantly clear that I was holding on to this physically in my body. And, and I had never <laughs> had any sort of experience like that and after that, I was hooked and um, I kept tapping myself and then eventually went on to get certified so that I could share it with other people. So I know that was a long answer, but that I love it, though. That's fascinating. And um, just to clarify for folks who maybe are new to the concept, um, EFT really uh, it, it draws from Eastern medicinal traditions, right? Like you're actually tapping on those meridians. It's not just some random like tap under your arm for no reason, right? Like <laughs> right. No, it's uh, yeah, very very much aligned with Chinese medicine, and um, you know. I often describe it in comparison to acupuncture because people are more familiar with acupuncture. So when you go to an acupuncturist, they take those tiny little needles and they put them in at certain points of the body. And the points that they're putting those needles in at are the end points of the meridians. So with tapping, instead of using needles, we are applying light acupressure by gently tapping on some of these same points. To stimulate those points, right? To kind of, yes, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's not just a bunch of weird people tapping on their bodies. It's actually very well anchored in, you know, ancient traditions. So, yeah. And there are a lot of studies that back it up. So like yeah. the science that shows how it's shifting things because it is changing things in, in your brain. And um, it's been shown to reduce the amount of cortisol in mm -hmm. the body by up to 43%. That was a study done by, by wow. Dr. Peter Stapleton. And that's a really, that's a really big number because cortisol, you know, is the stress hormone. And when you're stressed out, you can't think straight. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, and, and there is a real correlation between how much cortisol you have and how much extra weight you're carrying. Right. Um, not always it's, it's a correlation, not causation necessarily, but let's talk about a little bit about that because I know for, for me, I used to be a big time stress eater and stress and anxiety are very related. Um, and 
you know, for, for, I would say most of my clients, they are, you know, I tend to work with women who are in or very career driven, who often have children. There's a lot going on and um, they are high performing. They are super achievers. And in order to be high performing, we often have to have a good amount of stress, right? We need cortisol, but it's when we cope with that through eating is where um, for, for my clients, we find ourselves um, really miserable. And so can you just talk a little bit about how might somebody who struggles with overeating use EFT to, as, as one of their tools for overcoming that habit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a tool that can be used proactively in that you can, you can begin to use it every single day as part of your self-care practice, but then it can also be used reactively in those situations where you find yourself really craving something. Um, and you know, there's a knowing that like, I don't really need that chocolate, right? I want it, but I yes, don't really exactly, need it right exactly. now. And so yeah. you, can, you can reduce that, uh, that urge to, to go do it. You know, of course you actually have to do the tapping. You have to be willing yeah. to like stop and, and do that. But just to add on to what you were, what you were saying before, you know, that like, when we have these experiences in, in our lives that, that can cause stress or any experience, really, we have emotions attached to them. Yes. And when those emotions are uncomfortable emotions like anger, frustration, sadness, what we tend to do is shove them down, right? And then we distract ourselves with something else so that we don't have to feel those uncomfortable feelings. And for some t- people, that's throwing themselves into their work. And for some people, that's throwing back like an extra couple glasses of wine at night or yeah. Yeah. Those chips, whatever, whatever it is so that you don't have to feel those feelings. And so tapping is this really gentle way that helps you approach holding space for those feelings so that we can move through them and not have to continue to run from them. And, um, and that's the beauty of it really. It really is the beauty of it. So how, would someone who's curious about how does somebody even get started with EFT? Like if they're not in a group where there's a guest speaker, you know what I mean? Like, what would you say are some uh, good ways for people to kind of get their feet wet and and learn more about it? Well, I always like to to tell people about my free masterclass, because in that I really talk more about the science behind it, why it's working, how it works, um, and then give an experience in an introductory experience so that you can really feel what it feels like in your body Um, because you can talk about something, uh, you know, till you're blue in the face, but it's until you actually experience it for yourself that you're going to have that aha moment. And so anybody can access, access my free masterclass by visiting mindshiftwithlauren.com forward slash masterclass. Um, Or, you know, you could always do, and I, you could always Google um, EFT and, and, whatever it is you're struggling with, right? So like EFT and overeating or EFT and sadness. And I can guarantee you there's some sort of video that's going to pop up. Um, But one of the most important things to know when tapping, it's not just knowing where these points on the body are that we need to tap on. The the other critical part of it is this, this part where we speak out loud and acknowledge the emotions that we're feeling. And so um, you know, I, I make lots of YouTube videos too. And I, because I can, I think that they can be helpful, but I always like to, uh, tell, tell my audience that, that it's important to really see if you are meshing well with the, with the words that are be, being used, because if the words aren't really hitting the spot for you, right. If they're not, uh, if they're not really jiving with how you're feeling, it's important to pause that and to really tune into how you are feeling. And I mean, it's also why it's, a, it's really good to work with a practitioner to really help make it as specific to you as possible. Because if you're saying words that you're like, oh, that's not really me. That doesn't really, you know, sound like my right. problem or whatever. Yeah. It's not going to work. It's not going to be as effective. Yeah. How long would you say people need to work with a practitioner before they can really kind of do it on their own, if mm-hmm. ever? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, you know, from, from my experience, I have a, I have an eight week program where we work, I work with clients one-on-one and it's always my intention by the end of that eight, eight weeks for them to really feel empowered, 
um, to be able to continue this this work on their on their own and to understand how to come up with the words uh, on on their own. Um, you know, some people really pick it up quick, and other people, you know, it, sometimes it's hard when you're really like feeling the feelings. I often describe it as you know, being like in the eye of a tornado, when you've got all this going on, and you're in the middle, and it's whirling and swirling all around you, it can be really hard to figure out where to start and what to say. And so having that practitioner to kind of have that uh, different perspective, that outside of uh, set of eyes can really help to pull that pull that stuff out of you. Absolutely. So can you give my audience just an idea of like, okay, so let's say I'm I'm overeating. Um, I come home every night. I'll, I'll, I'll use my, you know, my real story from back in the day, but I would come home every night. Well, first of all, you know, at work, I would, I would do okay during the day, but then I'd come home and I would just want to eat, you know, snacks and wine and cheese and bread. And I would just kind of really just go to food as my soothing mechanism for the stress. How might I, if that's my habit, how might I use EFT? Like, do people use it in the moment when they're feeling that way? Do they use it in hindsight? How would it work? Yeah. So you can use it, you can use it both ways, right? Um, and I would I always tell people it's easier to implement this tool when it is something that you're practicing on a on a regular basis, right? You're more likely to kind of pull it out of the tool bag if uh if you are comfortable with it, right? Yeah. But yes, you can absolutely use it in the moment. So if, for example, you are really craving that that glass of wine or that, you know, cheese or whatever, what the way that I kind of do it is like, okay, I feel like I really want it right now, but I am, I, I know I don't <laughs> have yeah. to have it, right? And yeah. I'm going to give myself five to 10 minutes of tapping and if see if I can reduce that craving, right? So if it's like an eight, like eight, let's say an eight out of 10 of like how bad I want it right now, you can just start tapping and say, and saying to yourself, even though I really want that glass of wine, or I really want that chocolate or whatever it is, I love and accept myself, even though I really want it, it's going to taste so good. It's okay. And I'm okay, right? You just come up with these phrases. And, uh, you know, and the, the general phrase is, even though I'm feeling blank, or even though I want blank, I love and accept myself. That's like the basic and you can yeah. and then you go to the additional points. Like I really, I really want that wine. That wine is calling me. Yeah, I really want it. And by saying it out loud, and tapping on the points, what happens is, is you really begin to create some distance from it, right? And you can be like, th thoughts start to come up. And it's like, oh, I'm really just like worried about this meeting that I have tomorrow, right? Or uh, whatever it may be that's really bothering you, that's kind of, you know, driving you to want that and not focus on the thing that's, that's really going on. Um, and so that's kind of how it works. Yeah, I, I love that. That's a great, that's a great example. So one more question for you. Um, I mean, so you're talking about, and, and, and my, my audience can't see you right now, but Lauren was just tapping her head when she was giving that example and tapping <laughs> on her temples and tapping the side of her hand. And, and you just said, you know, saying it out loud and doing the tapping can be really helpful. So do people think you're crazy when you're doing this? Like, is your husband like, what's happening, Lauren? Are your kids? I mean, I'm sure your husband and kids now know oh, this. Yeah. Yes. But like, what do you do if like you're, you're in public or, you know what I mean? Like you're at work uh -huh. and there's a big brownie tray in the staff kitchen. Like, what do you do? Yeah. So if you are not in a space where you feel comfortable tapping on your head, right? You're in a conference room and they're bringing in all this food or whatever it may be, right? There are additional points. So there are there are points that are part of the regular protocol. Um, and then there are additional points. And so the additional points that I like to share for situations like that when you are in public is the uh, any finger, if you go to any single finger and you put, bring your index finger and your thumb to either side of any finger at the base of the nail and you just squeeze on any finger, right? And if you're doing this like in a, in a meeting or something, it just looks like you're fidgeting. You're just, you know, playing with your fingers. But what's happening is, is that as you're squeezing these points, just like how when you're tapping on the other points, 
It's sending a message to the amygdala in the brain, telling the amygdala that it doesn't need to be producing all of that cortisol. And then slowly it's reducing the amount of cortisol in the body. So you start to feel calmer. And when you start to feel calmer, that's where you can make those good sound decisions, right? Because when all of a sudden like that food is coming in and it's like, ah, I want it, right? Like, it's like, you're not thinking straight because that cortisol is really pumping through the body. And so if you squeeze these points, and even if you just are squeezing and taking a few deep breaths, that's going to help, you know, bring you back down, ground you so that hopefully you can make that, that better decision. Yeah. I love that. I'm actually doing it right now as Lauren's talking and I'm feeling calmer already. I'm like, do I have a nap today? I feel so calm. <laughs> um, and then um, I said that was the last question, but I actually thought of one more. I would love to ask okay. you. Um, so my listenership and my clients often tend to be women in their, I definitely have, I, I have clients who are in their twenties and thirties, but we are mostly women in our forties and fifties. And even I have uh, one or two, well, maybe just one in her early sixties. But the point is that my listeners tend to be around this menopausal, the menopausal decades, plural, which we're talking about. Everybody thinks <laughs> menopause is just like this, like one, you know, this it happens this one year. No, it's actually like a 10 year process. Um, and so, you know, with menopause, many of us go through, and actually, even if it's not menopause, even if it's, you know, you have young children, it's all the same kind of symptoms, but like, I'm imagining the EFT can really help people with sleep. Like I was just thinking it right now when I was squeezing the base of my uh, nail beds, like you had mentioned. And I was thinking to myself, wow, I could do that at night if I'm having trouble. Like last night I got up to go to the bathroom, like went back to bed, but then I couldn't fall asleep right away. I'm like, I wonder if that would help, right? Like at night. Um, yes. so I'm imagining that EFT, I mean, I know it helps with, you know, a whole host of, of ailments, but I was imagining it might be particularly helpful for women who are going through menopause, which has so many kind of, you know, we, we suffer from sleep, um, not sleeping well, we have hot flashes, all those things. Do you have any experience with that, Warren? Yeah. So one of the positive side effects of tapping in general, regardless of whatever it is that you're tapping about, is better sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and I do often say that if you, you know, are someone who, whether it's you struggle with falling, falling asleep at night or staying asleep, right, you can tap before you go to bed um, and kind of use it as a way of kind of clearing the clutter from your mind, right? Some of it, sometimes for some people, it's that you can't turn your mind off, right? You can't fall asleep because you're thinking about all these things from today and all these things you got to do tomorrow and you just can't turn it off. And so if you take the time to tap and say those things out loud, that's a, that is a big um, help with this too. Like when you are in a position where you can, you know, say stuff out loud, that really does amplify the experience. Um, it helps to, I like to think of it as almost like sweeping some of that stuff over to the yeah. side. So you can kind of create some spray, space in your brain to really find that, find that rest. And then if you're someone, uh, like you said, you got to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, you come back and you're tossing and turning. I will tell people, you know, sometimes the idea of actually tapping while you're trying to fall back to sleep, maybe that's going to wake you up a little bit more. But what you can do is, you know, sure, you could squeeze your fingers like you were just saying, or if you are just like in a comfortable position, and maybe you, um, you know, find one of the points to touch on. So there's a point underneath the eye, right? So if you're curled up on your side and you just bring one of your hands like underneath your eye and you apply some light pressure and do some deep breathing, it's going to help to calm you down. Because the whole idea is, is that it's really helping you to come out of that fight or flight mode um, to calm the body and, and come back to that centered space. I love it. What a beautiful, beautiful gift you offer to people, Lauren, because I mean, especially, you know, women who are professional and also moms, we are so overstressed and so overworked and overwhelmed and overstretched and all the things. Um, and so this is a really beautiful potential, you know, antidote to, to that, that you can add to your toolbox. So I hope you all enjoyed hearing Lauren um, talk about the EFT practice um, and Lauren, we will make sure we get in the show notes, your link to your YouTube channel, um, so that people can see you and practice with you there. And also we'll make sure we get mindshift with lauren.com forward slash masterclass. Did I get that right? Yep. 
in the show notes so that people can come and experience this for themselves. Is that masterclass free, Lauren, or do you just? Yeah. That is a free, that is a free masterclass that is on my website. So can awesome. access it at any time. Yeah. Awesome. And how else can people find you? What's the best way to just kind of connect with you for folks who would like yeah. to? Yeah. I mean, you can always just go to my website and send me a message through there, mindshiftwithlauren.com. Or if you search on Instagram, mindshiftwithlauren, I'll pop up on there too. So awesome. And that's L-A-U-R-E-N, everyone. Lauren, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I know that my clients and my listeners are going to, to really benefit from having heard you today. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Always fun chatting with you. You've been listening to The Life You Crave. I lost 30 pounds years ago without dieting, willpower, or deprivation. I'm on a mission to help other women, including you, do the same. You can book a free weight loss strategy session with me over at leahpinelli.com. That's L-I-A-P-I-N-E-L-L-I.com. See you on our next call or on the next episode. And remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on iTunes. Mm-hmm.